We're the only friends you've got now. And we're going to take you up to the roof and see if you can fly. If you do have to come back to the desk, you understand the hotel would appreciate as much discretion as possible. <clears throat> discretion? Make you sick. Silly buggers. A bit dead. Given the tools, a bit of peace and quiet. A lot of people come down this way, so I'm told. Whoever did it would have to be fast and strong. A gorilla. Know any gorillas? How about yourself, Joe? Oh, nice. Very nice. Cut out. Oh, desperate character? I think he's going to whip me with his stick, Wally. Ridiculous. Desperate character and they leave you with a weapon. Tis an Ellie, but he could still manage a bit of GBH. He could poke you in the bollocks with it, Wally. Hey, try. I need this stick. I had an accident to my foot. Shame. Which one? Left. Ah. You want to have a bit of care, son? A foot like that could cause you a lot of aggravation. A lot of pain. Five floors that one. We can fit you up for this one, son. You're in the shit, bloody amateur. He's in a fucking dream world. His lips are sealed. He's a bit rough, but he's not wrong. I suppose you keep your mouth shut. I suppose your pals are in the clear. Who's left? It's down to you. They're going to put you inside and post the key and Robert the fucking Bruce and he can't help you because he's dead. I think I should get to speak to a lawyer. <laughs> You've been sitting up late, haven't you, son? Watching midnight movies. You've seen too many of them. You're not in bleeding America. You are in England. No, I'm not. England starts 100 miles south of here, that's all I mean. You're a bit of a fanatic. Am I right? Because I don't think this is England, that isn't fanaticism, it's geography. Fucking whoops. You don't want to mind your head about geography, son. We'll decide the geography. 
That's our job. We're geography teachers. <laughs> so, we have two bodies that night. One of them found in some kind of builder's shed under cement bags. Cement bags, that right, sir? The other one found here. Nice soft sheets. By his detective in the morning. Yes? See what I'm trying to say? Both of them on the same night. They wouldn't be the only ones. There's people dying every night of the year. Yes, that's the point. Violent kind of city, from what I hear. Razor slashes, chopping each other, sporrings off. Dozens of murders every night, I expect. The only thing is, you don't get them tied up first. Old Sir Colin, he was tied up. There, on that bed. Just like the other one, Kilpatrick. Him in a shed, where you put him, right? Want to say something? Plenty of time to change your mind. Both of them killed on the same night. You're right, that's nothing. Both of them tied up in the same way. Well, even that's possible. We're not stupid. Don't think we're stupid. The only thing is, they was tied up with the same cord. That's the kind of thing they can tell nowadays. Sir Colin was tied up with a piece of cord that you used on the other guy. Isn't science wonderful? Which is no fucking coincidence. Do you have to do that? At your end, sir. Everything tight, was it? Not exactly unused to that kind of security operation. Surveillance discreetly in the corridors. Rooms gone over beforehand. Maybe you were too discreet. Who could have anticipated this? And that door downstairs, it's unbelievable. Well, like you said, it's a hell of a job doing a window like that. I could see where anybody might wonder if it was a put-up. Is this how you handle things? Thrashing out the possibilities in front of the suspect. Some kind of new technique, is it? Technique? Sir? Not for this one. Seems to me he's dead. Doesn't matter to this little shit who he's killed. All that matters. If it was just anybody, that'd be murder. And if it's a Colin, somebody like him. You're not murder, are you, son? Don't think I don't understand. We make a study of it. How you think? Planting bombs. Blowing up school kids. Shooting down somebody's old mum at the airport. You don't think of it as murder, son, I know. Assassination, isn't that what you call it? Well, it's political, isn't it? And it's true, you've got your headlines. Paris, Berlin, Rome, and of course, London. Wouldn't surprise me if the chinks didn't have it on their telly. You got on all right with the chinks, old Sir Colin. But since we make the geography, you don't have anywhere to hide. That's right. There are no more borders left for you to run across. This is the only country you've got left. Isn't it lucky for you we're so fucking civilised? <laughs> Technique? Is that what he called it? No, they would have taken you uh, to the house in Chelmsford, I think, and beaten it out of you. But I don't know anything. Uh, if you don't know anything, then that takes a little longer. You're going to take me back to them? Uh, for the moment, you're in my custody. Not let go, I'm afraid. Are you a policeman? <laughs> Margaret Broidy's has got nothing to do with any of this. It's early. This is somewhere to start. Is that you, Rose? I know you. You're the one that calls himself a friend of Margaret's. 
You heard about that young fella, the one that was killed. That's part of it. Is it the police are? I need to speak to the girl. She's not here. Then I'll come back. No, wait. Is it about Michael Dart? If I tell you about Michael Dart, will you let the girl go? He was the last man in the world I would have expected to see. But I knew him. Michael Dart, the gunman. Hadn't he laboured as a boy in the mud of the poor farm next to ours? And I thought, if I betray him, I'm a dead man. We were never friends. And later on, I walked past him in the street without a glance. His father had quarrelled with mine. Still, it can't have been easy being a hero at 15. Just a reckless boy who could coax the birds down from the trees with the charm that was in him. Twenty years on the run has rubbed the charm off him. you going to answer it? Maybe your husband. I don't know where he is. He decided to take a break. He wasn't feeling very well. He's in serious trouble. Didn't you know he was a political? Politics? But he works for a bookmaker. Well, he's miscalculated the odds this time. His speciality was planting bombs. Pop. Just like that. And a leg here, an arm there, a tangle of guts festooning a petrol sign. Oh, God, that's ridiculous. I mean, he's a loyalist. He never went further than a grumble over the papers. I mean, if you knew him, if you only knew him. Who are you to talk about knowing him? Had you no instinct, an Ulster girl like you? I imagine you might have a brother marching one of those parades, banging a large absurd drum, or a bowler-hatted uncle, sweating in his Sunday best to applaud a sermon on the Battle of the Boyne. You've spent all these years in the same bed as a man who was a terrorist. He has a list of your tribal dead notched on his shillelagh. Know him? You? Do you think you can say anything to me? Of course, you're a brave fellow, aren't you, dealing with a woman? If only my Tom was here. Know him? Know Michael Dart? You don't even know your husband's name. What's going on here? I was listening to a racing there when that big bastard... I gather uh, Mr Kennedy isn't at work today. He'd been there. And then he got a phone call left in a hurry. Because about gambling, I got this for holding in the door. Yeah, well, his wife would have phoned after we left. Playing the loyal little woman. His wife? What are you on about? I went out of this car. Where are you taking me? To a quiet place. Where are you going to tell me all about Michael Dart? And how he killed Peter Kilpatrick. And why he didn't. Who the hell are you anyway? Bronze. But then I expect you'd guess that already. What's this place? Who lives here? My parlour. Come into my parlour. Now, let us understand one another. Your landlord's real name is not Kennedy. It is Michael Dart, who was, possibly still is, an IRA gunman. But do I have to tell you that? Aren't your horse out of the same stable, at least in theory? Making a noise among your old school friends, joining certain associations, of course, with your background, there was a file on you. One day, there's a telephone call, a hint, a tip, and Peter Kilpatrick has put it to the house to make friends with you. He thought you might need a bigger fish. 
He didn't for one moment suspect that dull landlord of his. No, it is the wife who caught his eye. Are you with me so far? I told you, you've got the wrong man. Quite the lady's man, Sir Patrick. Bedding the wife. I expect she was lonely. Plenty of those among his conquests. Every man to his own weakness. Uh, being young and virile, he went over to enjoy the Broidy girl. And that is where Michael Dark followed and shot him. I don't know what you're talking about. I doubt if you've ever known anything much. You're a romantic. Born in Glasgow, dreaming of Ireland. Boasting in front of the wrong people. Getting yourself noticed. Is it possible you didn't know anything about Kennedy? Not until he came to us, Michael Dowd. Said he'd killed Kirkpatrick and asked for your help. Well, if that's the way it happened, how could you refuse? A dirty police spy had been executed by a hero who had suffered for Ireland. Did it never occur to you that Peter Kilpatrick got himself killed because he was screwing Michael Dart's pretty little wife? That's not true. Look, leave me alone. I don't know anything. Ah, you romantics. Michael Dart has taken himself off to hide. What could be simpler? Shall we start again? I won't stay here. Wait along out there somewhere. Don't be foolish about going off. Find yourself something to read. I thought I'd sympathise with the IRA. You've done that for me. I don't think Braun needed anybody to tell him about Michael Dart. He knows it all already. The IRA probably think he's one of them. Braun's the biggest spy of the lot. IRA. Fuck the IRA. Whose country do you think you're in? There. That's whose country you're in. What's this? Some kind of joke? The sentences were really rough. Irishmen do things like that. Nobody kills for Scotland. Nobody dies for Scotland. Forty years, tartan army. Clowns. Who do they think cared? Some of us care. All right, you're a believer. What about Brond? Brond's our hope. Because of him, everything's going to be different. Are you daft. Brond's a policeman himself. Or a spy, or maybe he's the devil out of hell. I don't know what it is you want, but whatever it is, he'll spoil it. And whatever you believe in, he'll fuck it up. Why don't you see how our friend is next door? Make sure he's comfortable. You shouldn't upset him like that. He's a good man. A good soldier. You told me before. Oh, yes. Kilts and trumpets at dawn, loyal and brave. A Scottish soldier. How can he be so stupid? Doesn't he know how much you despise him? He has medals, did you know that? Soldiers get them. And he has some that are not given easily, or for nothing. He went to the wars and came home again. He's a patriot. He's been going to the war for a very long time. He's the man who built the British Empire. Empire. What's the British Empire to do with this? He fought against Napoleon and then the Crimea. In the last war, he fought in the desert. And in 1916, he fought on the dry plains of the Somme and drowned in its mud when winter came. Kenya, Korea, he's been there. He's still in Ireland. 
And only last week he came back from a little group of islands in the South Atlantic. And every time he came home, he found things were worse than when he'd gone away. But he never had learned to fight for himself. I must have left these the last time I was here. Look at how many medals he has. Who? Primo. He's a funny kind of hero now. Oh, he started young. I expected some time or other he'll have uh, tortured an arrow, but black, some little yellow man in pyjamas. It's the sort of thing good soldiers have to do. Hmm. All gone. Still, I don't expect I should ever see this room again. Come. We're going to Edinburgh. To see Michael Dart. You were wrong to call him stupid. He's not stupid. But you're young. Too young to understand that a man needs something or someone to believe in. They say you shouldn't look down in a river for too long. After a while, you want to jump. Where's Muldoon? What have you done to him? Why are you so against Primo being a hero? He's a dedicated man. And to carry on despite losing your son, your only son, your chance at a kind of immortality. To lose him in such a stupid accident. Well, is there anything else? Nothing. Only about Muldoon. Nothing else you want to ask me? Nothing else you want to talk about? Have you made good use of my gift? It's no use as a weapon. Detectives at the hotel said that. Uh, like you, they have no curiosity. This little gem I gave you was caught out in a hollow mantle lathe, tipped with a feral, two pieces of Cane to keep the blade snug. 27 inches of tempered German steel. You could kill a man with that. But not in the back of a car. There just wouldn't be room enough. Imagine this is a high-performance engine. Put in an ordinary mineral motor oil. Imagine this is an identical engine. Put in Mobile One synthetic motor oil. Start them up. Now, temperatures in some parts of your engine could reach 295 degrees centigrade if driven to extremes. But when you see that eventually something like this can happen to ordinary mineral oil, the case for Mobile One is pretty clear. If you're giving serious thought to buying your own business and you're wondering where to start, there's one paper you can't afford to miss. So why just keep thinking when you can do it with Dalton's Weekly? Dalton's Weekly. Thousands of shops and businesses for sale every week. More than in any other paper. So ask your news agent for Dalton's Weekly and discover your dream in Dalton's. To the Penguin! Buy a six-pack! Get an extra bar free! Have you just received your winter gas bill? If not, you're probably about to. Either way, you could find British Gas's easy payment schemes helpful. We divide your total estimated gas costs for the year into equal installments. 
so that you don't have to cope with quarterly bills. And the really good news is you can include your latest gas bill in the scheme, so you can spread the cost of keeping warm this past winter over the coming months. For more information about this helpful idea from British Gas, phone 0800 333 666. The call will be free. Or drop in at your local gas showroom. We're here to help. They're eating Kellogg's Bran Flakes, too. Indeed. Everyone eats Kellogg's Bran Flakes out here. Some say they bring good luck. Others say they stop buffalo charging, lions attacking, snakes biting. Crocodiles? Crocodile? <laughs> there are no crocodiles out here. Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Let's just say they're very, very tasty. It seemed like nothing more than common sense to make pure palm olive also available in the purest colour, pure white palm olive, in a pure, delicate fragrance. You'll have to carry me in there. I'm no Muldoon, I'm no walking into any parlour. Dear boy, this is a brothel. Why else do you think Mrs. Kennedy's here? Jackie? Why would she be here? Uh, for a meeting with that murderous bastard she calls her husband. Oh, my God. I swear everyone in the world turns up in this place sooner or later. George, there seems to be a problem about getting in. Nonsense. Maureen? Do you know this man? Of course. This is Mr... Smith and friends. And friends. Good God, Maureen, I'll vouch for this man. Where's Kennedy, then? I suppose I shouted it out now. What I saw in the bridge that day. No more games. Patience, lad. Patience! All good things come in their own time. Well, don't look so glum, young fellow. Mr. Smith? Mm. <laughs> that young man was looking for something more exciting, Maureen. I could see him bracing himself for it as he came in. Bracing himself for what? There's never been any trouble here. Trouble? Who's talking about trouble? I have another Irish joke for our collection, Maureen. She's very fond of Irish jokes. Maureen. Oh, sorry. A joke? What was it, then? What do you call a man who sticks his finger up an Irishman's backside? Hmm? You call him a brain surgeon. <laughs> uh, uh, true story. It's about this chap who's on the bench for the first time. Uh, not a lawyer, uh, sort of local government sort of chap. Right, he's on the bench, first case, drunk and disorderly. Ten pounds or thirty days. Well, this fellow says... Fourteen years penal servitude. For drunk and disorderly. Consternation in the court. They huddle all around the foot on the bench. Then he gets up, clears his throat. On uh, consideration, I will commute that sentence to ten pounds or... 30 days. But then he says, bring in the next criminal. <laughs> bring in the next. It's supposed to be fine, old oh, man. Not much humor about tonight, isn't it? Angela. Robert, isn't it? Would you like a drink? Well, if you're not interested in drinking, it must be something you'd like to do. Let's fuck. Thank you. 
can't, I can't breathe. It was your first time, wasn't it? <sighs> Sorry, my late developer, country boy. But you, there's no one ever said to you, but the way you look, the way you talk, you don't seem like the kind of girl who... Can we do a thing like this? Don't be boring. I was going to say you don't seem like the kind of girl who would go to bed with somebody like me. You wouldn't believe where I live. Butt and Ben at the end of a farm road. Tell folk my father's in agriculture. He's only the labourer. He's never had, never had anything, except for me. Do we have to get up now? Not yet. I think I'll see what's going on. Would you believe that all the land you can see from our front door belongs to Sir Colin? <laughs> Bastard. Sorry. He wins the lot. Well, his son does now. You're brown all over. <laughs> Except for the bit in the middle. God, you're beautiful. You should see this. It's your friend Brond. What? He's kneeling in front of her. She's hurting him. Now he's up against the wall. She could kill him. Please, don't do this. Oh, God. You lousy bitch. Go, primo. Just go back up. I'm a deaf man. Oh, for God's sake, primo, there isn't an empire anymore. You don't need to torture the Chinese. They'll sell your carry out. No problem. I'm not afraid of you. No, no. No, after that. Daydreams. Daydreams are in the air. Generals have them. Bishops, bus drivers too, I dare say. Nothing to worry about, just innocent daydreams. If you want to go, you'd better take little Miss Kennedy with you. It's time. No need for any more waiting. Tell them, I've been hurt myself. 
Oh, sorry. Is this your man? Let's go. Come on. Leave me alone. Look, you don't know what this place is. Tom, sir. So is Bronze. Tom's leaving the country tonight. I have to see him. Let him go after what he's done. Not until he talks to me. Look, get up. Come on. I don't even know if he loves me. Look, I'll go myself. I'll leave myself. The man came to the house for me. The same brought me then here. Then he came from Bronze. <laughs> he brought me here. The woman met us at the door. This is the woman you're Tom sleeping with, he said. <laughs> He was laughing at me. He was lying. Don't you know what Tom's done for Tom, you? That man Braun said, you don't even, you don't even know your husband's name. It doesn't matter whether his name's Tom Kennedy or Michael Dart. You're all he has in the world. That's why Peter Kilpatrick's dead. I think he'd kill anyone that even looked at you. Oh, God. I feel as if he's watching me. Sorry, Jackie. Bron planned this. You're a dead man. Or you are. Either way, it saves Bron the trouble. Tom, please. Cannot easily be explained. It cannot be seen or heard. It cannot be touched, and yet it can mobilize the elements. It can harness nature and transform darkness at the speed of light. It is the most prolific form of energy known to man, the most efficient and versatile power we can command as our servant. It is electricity, energy for life. Do you like it? Oh, it's broken. Hmm, I can't fix it. Lunchtime. Hey, what's the matter? My robot's broken. Well, at least enjoy your Petit Danone. New Petit Danone. Children love the taste, and it has plenty of protein and calcium. I know now. The circuits were overloaded. Now at the special trial price of just 49 pence for eight. New Petit Dinone from our spray.
to get a free quotation for your car insurance, just dial 100 and ask for free phone AA Auto Quote tomorrow. You didn't like heights. Ah, you could over here. You glad to be off the stick? Aye. It was decent of them getting you a left back. The friends for the university. Aye, something like that. Should have asked them in for a cup of tea. Your mother would have been pleased. Would she? Hit the bloody rain. You know me. I've had too much of the sun in my time. <laughs> I've abided all my life here, and then they put me in a khaki uniform and hooked me off to the other side of the world. I'd never even crossed words with a yellow man. Never heard you talk about the war before. Better things to talk about. The Japs took us the same day they sank the old Prince of Wales. Hey, this place does me eat. I'll not leave it a second time. I'll need to begin back, Dad. I can't stay. Thank you. I don't regret it. Had to be done. There was a soldier. <laughs> A Scottish soldier. <laughs> it's a great tune. Aye. Mind you, they three years ruined me. Dear boy, what are you doing? I was just thinking oh, about jumping. That's what happens if you watch the water going by for too long. Somebody else said that to me. No, I was thinking about a girl. Why are you so drearily insistent upon the direction in which your interests lie? I was sitting in the toilet the other afternoon reading the graffiti nine inches from Yorkshire, it said, and did I want it? Well, of course. But then that poses the problem of cutting it off, and if I manage that, how is I to touch it to myself? Oh, I want you to go and see her. Who? Margaret. I want to see her. I thought you keep telling me. Why didn't you? I feel dirty. Everything's spoiled. <coughs> you see, I understand why the English get upset when the Scots talk about independence. I feel the same way myself about the Shetlanders or, or the Orkneys, little piss-pot islands whining, we are Arcadians, we are not Scotch. Bugger them. I think I'd send her a gunboat. Oh, just a wee gunboat. A wee, wee, particularly wee gunboat. <laughs> I don't know where Muldoon is. What's happened to him? So I'm being tortured, the groin. Primo. The Scottish soldier. Are you listening? What? Well, that stuff. That stuff's not real. Don't try and kid the kidder. Nothing real happens here. This is never, never land. Kept me waiting a long time. Didn't think you were going to let me in.
Why aren't you in prison? I don't know what being in prison is anymore. You killed him. How could anyone leave him in that horrible place to die? Go, Patrick. I had nothing to do with him dying. Doesn't matter what you've been told, it's not true. Somebody said to me, everybody's story ends in corruption. Donald Baxter. Stupid kind of thing he would say. You're not me, he said. You're one of the sad ones. The worm gets us early. Can't you see I've had enough? Do you know what I'd like? Just to sit here until your father walked in through that door. I'd say to him, I slept with Margaret. Just slept. It was all innocent. Then I'd say, I'm a university student and I want to marry your daughter. I don't understand you. Is that any reason for not getting married? Oh, for God's sake! Of course, it's not your father that's coming, is it? Did Bron tell you to phone if I came? We wanted Sir Colin out of the way. He had made some rash commitments to friends in South Africa. Business friends. Uh, there was going to be a scandal. And we couldn't bear any hint of scandal. And then there was Primo and his friends who didn't care for Sir Colin. Uh, according to Primo, he came from a long line of bastards that stretched back to Flodden. And if Scotland were a Christian country, he would have been killed long since. That, of course, was useful. Uh, well, there's an economy in such things. Primo, let me stay here. I'll take this with me now. I shall miss this room. Who are you? I lived in Chicago for a time. My master sent some Swedes on business. They came off the aircraft, jittering with nerves. The city of Arcapone, you see. I told them I'd seen people and known people who'd lived in Chicago all their lives, who had never seen a shot fired in anger. I amused myself with the music. As we came out of the airport, there were police sirens, guns, shots, screaming men. Uh, the Swedes did all their business in the hotel, never left it. Of course, after that, they couldn't believe a word I said. Beth always hated living here. Are you going to kill me? The old man in the hotel, he died hard. Has to be worth it. You see, there's going to be a trial. And once they've told all their lies, we're going to show that Kilpatrick and the old man were tied up with the same bit of rope. But the police know that already. Yes, but there's a plan. It's all worked out. It's going to be different this time. Is that what Bron promised you? He's not on your side. He never was. He never was on your side. You're talking to a deaf man, son. Killed him down there on the bridge. He was just a wee boy. 
What could he have done or seen? He had red hair. Just like his sister. Christ, I heard these bones breaking. <laughs> Falling and death is falling, and he will fail. 